Today I will show you how to add a depth in your photos while doing photo manipulations. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Neymanja and welcome to another really fun tutorial. Today you will learn a lot of cool things, so let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin. Read right, guys, today we will start with this blank piece of paper and we will add several different images as you can see right here on that piece of paper, including this Jeep that is actually a 3D model. I will talk about that a little bit later. So let's start with this guy right here. I will add him first. Just paste it here, move it probably somewhere here, then go to this guy, copy, paste it, move it somewhere here, then to this guy, copy, and paste it somewhere here. Okay, now I will move this guy all the way to the top because I want to be in the front of everything. And I will turn these two layers, convert them into smart object just because, just right click and turn to convert to smart object, just because I want to shrink them to make them smaller without losing the image quality if I want to make them bigger later if this is not the proper dimension from the start. So I will probably leave this guy like that. Then go here, Control or Command T and just make this guy smaller. Like they're same size, but actually this guy is a little bit taller, but this is cool. Let's put this guy behind this one and Let's see, and this one probably somewhere here. Okay, and now let's go and add a background. This really cool night, a nice desert scene. So let's paste it right here. I will unzoom it and press Control or Command T, shrink it because it's too wide, too big. Make it smaller and actually move it up something like this. I really like it. This is already nice, cool looking scene, but we need to work on it to make a depth. I will show you how to make a depth in the scene and how to uh, colorize everything properly and add a few elements, etc. So, and we need to add this Jeep to the scene, this vehicle, ruined the vehicle. I will just hide these two guys, add this right here. And because this is a 3D model, it's already uh, come extracted with the shadows, with, with everything you can see that we can see through the windows. It's really cool. So I will put it right here, somewhere here. The vehicle will be definitely covered by those guys, but it's pretty cool addition to the scene. So this is really nice and cool. And all those photos and the Jeep and the background and those guys are part of the Envato Elements and they are sponsoring today's episode. And in case guys you didn't hear about Envato Elements, this is something like Ultimate Photoshopper's toolbox. It's a really cool place for designers and digital artists. They have 50 million plus stock photos that you can download and use them in your projects. You can search for whatever you want. They have really cool Photoshop actions that you can just download and apply to have some really cool results straight away from your photos. So something like these letters in the sand, you can write anything that you want or just some kind of a smoke effect or maybe some sand dust effect as you can see right here or some kind of a fire effect just apply action and you have it. Also, they have a lot of brushes. So maybe some powder brush, dust brush, or you can see some wet ink brush, etc. like these cool effects, like this ash dust or something like to turn any photo into a real paint effect. It's really cool. Also, I talk about 3D models. So they have 3D models and you can rotate them and choose any angle that you want. And when you choose angle, maybe I want from above, something like this. I just click download as PSD or PNG file, whatever I want and download it and that's it. Of course, they have a bunch of cool models. This is just something that is similar to this vehicle, but you can search for whatever you want. As you can see, a lot of cool things, really big library. And now let's talk about the pricing. It's $16.5 per month and you get unlimited usage of all the elements there, stock photos, videos, uh, audio files, brushes, actions, whatever you want. It's really cool, big library, and uh, they have license to, that you can use it for personal projects and also for commercial projects, which is awesome. And also guys, they have another deal here. If you have five members, you can pay $10.75 per month per 
member, which is really cool. And also you can choose if you want five or two, three members or six plus members, then you're going to Enterprise Edition. So this is really cool. If you want to sign up to Envato Elements and use all the content there creatively to make some awesome photo manipulations or just to do a work for your client or some personal work, use Photoshop brushes, actions, photos, sound effects, video, whatever. They're a really cool place for everything. You just need to Follow the link down there in the description, sign up and enjoy the content there. I personally love them. I use them in a lot of my projects. So like I'm using today some elements to create this really cool effect. So let's jump back to the Photoshop and let's continue with this cool tutorial. Right guys, now let's continue with this cool photo manipulation and let me show you how you can easily add a depth in your photos. So to be able to add a depth in your photo, you need to separate different plans from each other to separate the object from each other by adding either some elements in between or to make elements that are further away from camera a little bit brighter, desaturated, less contrast and out of focus a little bit more blurred. So let's do that. Let's start by turning the background into smart object too. So right click convert to smart object and I will, I will now apply the camera raw filter. And here in the camera raw, I will make this a little bit desaturated because now it's too saturated for my taste. So a little bit desaturated and also the blue color I want to go here to HSL to saturation and just desaturate it blue a little bit because it's too much for the feel that I want to have in this image. So something like this is cool. And I can also go and dehaze it a little bit if I want, as you can see, this is pretty cool too. So I'll press okay, maybe just a little bit color back. I will press okay. And this is it. We have a cool desaturated background that I like. Now let's go to these two guys. And uh, let's add these two guys in a group. So second plan, this is second plan. This guy is first plan. And the Jeep and the background are third plan. So this is, let's name it Jeep. Okay. And this is like a third plan. All right, so now we will first desaturate those guys a little bit, but they're not too saturated. They're pretty desaturated from this guy, but let me just show you what I mean. So hue and saturation, clip it to affect only these two guys, as you can see. And if they're saturated too much, you will see them first. You will, your eye will catch them first, much more before this guy right here. And that's not good. That's not like feeling uh, like a really nice feel of depth in your photo. You need first to see this guy, then second plan, then third plan. So. That's why I want to desaturate this a bit, just a touch like that. And also I will use curves, clip it to affect only this layer and just lower the contrast a little bit by brightening the darker tones, something like that. So before and after you can see it's a little bit less contrast, a little bit brighter image. So in the same time we made image a little bit brighter and a little bit less contrast. So this is before. This is after. So now definitely you see first this guy then those two guys and let's do the same with the Jeep. Let's go there, curves, clip it to affect only Jeep and I want to make Jeep a little bit desaturated. Oh, actually, sorry, a little bit less contrast and it's pretty desaturated but maybe another curve just to make it a bit brighter. So something, something like it to fade it out a little bit something like like this. So this is before and this is after. I really like it. So let's unzoom it. I always like to see a smaller image to have a better impression of positioning of the object and everything. So this is pretty cool. Maybe I just want to go to this guy right here and to move it maybe a little bit down. And this guy, this guy is pretty cool. So let's go to view and snap. I don't want this snap to be active. And maybe this guy a little bit down to something like this. Okay, now we separate these plans by desaturating and lowering the contrast and brightening the elements that are further away from camera. Now let's add some blur to the elements that are further away from camera. Okay, so let's start with these two guys. Let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and this five is too much, this guy is too blurred. So let's start with the two maybe. Two is pretty good. I like it. And the beauty of uh, having a layer as a smart object is that now I have smart filters. And if I want to change something later in the process of making this photo, I can just double click on this blur effect and just 
change it however I want and press OK. So this is it. So I will go with the same thing with this guy. I just need to press Control or Command F to repeat the effect. As you can see, just Control or F. And I will leave two again. So now they're a little bit further away from this guy and they're out of focus. And we will do the same with this with this uh, Jeep there. So let's maybe move it a little bit. Mm, something like that. And I will turn this into Smart Object 2 just to have fun with uh, the smart filters. So the Jeep is a little bit further away. So maybe four or something. Yeah, four or maybe even five. Let's see five. Yeah, five is pretty cool. And now we need to do the same with the background. So now we can apply either Gaussian blur to the background. Let me show you and apply this five. And because we cannot see the ground here, it's pretty cool. Or we can go with a filter blur gallery tilt shift like I did in a previous tutorial of this robot sitting on a throne of toilet paper. So here we can go and uh, move everything down. And I can always again change this by double clicking on the blur gallery and change the effects or I can just hide this effect and now my background will not be blurred at all. So let's reveal it back, see the clouds. Now they're blurred and this is pretty cool. Now we have this really nice impression of that. Now we will add a few more elements in between some dust particles and we will have even better photo overall. So now let's go and hide, actually collapse the group and this is this is okay. So I will add some dust elements between this first guy and these two guys. But this first guy is too saturated for this scene overall. So I will go to hue and saturation, clip it to affect only this guy and just desaturate it just a bit. Not like all the way down, but just a bit, something like that. And I will create a new layer right here. It will, I will name it dust. And now I will go to my brush settings to actually to brush and I will right click and go and use one of as you can see 45 different brushes for Ash Dust Photoshop stamp brushes. I downloaded them from the Envato elements. They're pretty cool and I will choose let's see this one or this one or whatever this this one looks cool. Okay. And as you can see I need to choose a color. So I will Alt or Option click on the sand right here and switch another color I'll choose from the clouds, this kind of white grayish color. Okay. And now I will make this brush a little bit smaller and intensity 20% is pretty cool. And I can paint with this, but also I want to change brush properties. So I will go to F5, press F5 or click right here, turn on shape dynamics, Go with the size jitter all the way up. Go with the angle jitter all the way up. And also, I want to. I don't want scattering. Actually, I, I can scatter it a little bit. Go to brush tip shape and increase the spacing a bit. And also, I can go to transfer and just play with this. This is perfect. And what I need to do now is just to paint with this brush to add an effect. And I will switch between these two colors. So a little bit with one, a little bit with another color and just add this kind of cool mist effect, dust effect in this middle field. Also I can, I can add it to the clouds too, why not? Just to have like there is this kind of situation in, in between those two guys. And now if you want to be a little bit better in everything, if you want to spend a little bit more time, you can add some kind of dust here. Just I'm just making a layer mask to remove some parts of the dust that I don't want to be on these guys. And now you can create a new layer, dust number two, and do everything the same with another brush, choose some different brush, just to don't have repeatable patterns. So probably let me see. This one looks cool. This one looks cool. And now again, I will just go and uh, make the same settings here just to play with this. I don't want textures. I want this. And just break this into a few different layers. I will just go with the two layers. I don't want to waste time. 
for this, but this is pr practically it. Okay, and now I will go and create another layer below those two guys, and this is dust number three. I just want to add a little bit more dust uh, on this Jeep right there, so to have this third plan a little bit whiter, brighter, etc. So this is pretty cool. This Jeep is even more in the dust. So let me see. Before and after, yeah, this is pretty cool. Before and after, so we definitely have two plans, three plans. So I can lower the opacity because it's too much. And this is pretty cool. Also, what I can do, I can go to this layer and blur it. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur everything because without, you can see a lot of elements here and there. This is pretty cool, but I want to have more smoother effect. Okay. And uh, here we have it. This is awesome. We can also go and uh, reposition these guys now if we want. Move it left and right, up and down. Just let me see. Oh, I like them here. So maybe just this guy. Maybe just this guy a little bit to the left. Okay, and this is it. You can add even more, even more elements if you want, but that's it. And I will go down there on the background, all the way down the background. And what I like to do, I like to desaturate the blues a little bit more. So I can go like this, actually cyan's because they are cyan on the sky. So I can go like that or let me show you really quickly. I will delete this. I can go to camera, roll, double, camera, double click and it will open my camera with all the settings that I did before. I can, de I can haze it a little bit. I can go to HSL and desaturate the sky a little bit more and also I can go here and brighten the sky a little bit with this this graduated filter and boost the exposure a little bit like that and I will press OK and as you can see this is before this is after just a subtle change but I like it now let's play with this guy in the front I also want to add several dust elements actually I will just add one dust number four I will add a little bit more dust here, just a little bit, like there is still some dust going on right there. And this is really cool, guys. So maybe these two guys are too much in the dust. You can always lower the opacity of everything or add even more like it's really like a sandstorm or whatever you want. But this is pretty much it. And now what I like to do, I like to merge everything together with Shift Control Alt or Shift Command Option E on a Mac. Merge everything into one layer. I will go to Filter, Camera, and do a final color grading here. So basically, I want to add a little bit more, more contrast. Now I want to dehaze everything a little bit. Also, I can open shadows. Also, I can lower the blacks a little bit, just a touch. And I will go and add vignette because I like it. And also, I will change some colors to have more like Mad Max color grading, something like, like this. I can go and sharp few things here I'm holding now Alt or Option key to see what I, what I will sharpen. Everything that is white will be sharpened a little bit less. And I can go to Split Toning and add a little bit of the orangey color in the shadows, but just darker shadows like, like this. And a little bit more in the highlights, just a little bit more towards the yellows in the highlights. So this is before, this is after. I really like it and let me see what we can do before let's let's press okay let me show you this is this is okay now we have color graded photo it's really cool i really like it but before that what we can do as a bonus if you want of course you can work on this photo a lot more than i'm doing here i'm just showing you some steps and some ideas giving you some ideas how you can work on your photos and add a different uh, feel of depth but here what you can do also you can go with uh, dodging and burning with a curve so i can 
use dark curve to dodge these two guys actually to burn these two guys with uh, really soft brush 10% opacity and I'm, I can make this side this side of guys a little bit darker as you can see maybe even more darker so, oops. so something like this this is pretty cool and also I can go with dodging and invert the mask. This is just a regular dodge and burn. Just, just add a little bit more bright parts here and I can put this into luminosity to affect only lights. And everything that I'm doing here, guys, I already did in a ton of my tutorials. So if you want to learn photo manipulations, just photo manipulation, just go and watch my tutorials about that. I can also do the same for this guy right here. Invert the mask and just make this part a little bit darker, especially this part. Of course, this needs more time. You need to invest more time in doing this kind of stuff, but this is just me showing you a few things. Right now we can group everything, shift Control alt or shift command option e on a Mac and uh, yeah, before that, sorry, undo it. What I see that I missed here. I want to go to the car. Where is it? It's right here. And actually not the car itself, but the background right there. And to another, another curve adjustment layer. Actually, yeah, to curve adjustment layer, make it darker and put it into luminosity to affect only lights. Invert, control or command I. And I just want to make this part behind the Jeep a little bit darker. But this is too much, so. Let's go here, just a little bit like that. Like that, it's okay. All right, now let's merge everything together and just repeat the camera raw that we already did. And here it is. We have really nice, cool photo with a depth between the plants. If you want these guys to be more blurred, you can go and because they are in a smart, uh, as a smart layer, so you have smart filters, you can change the blur effect pretty much easily like this. You can reposition them, you can blur the background more or less and everything is non-destructive. So this is awesome way to play with your photos and add a depth to your scenes. Right guys, so that's basically it for today. I really hope that you like this episode and that you learn some new fun and useful tips, tricks and techniques from this one. Now it's up to you to practice, experiment and have fun with your own photos by adding a depth in your photo manipulations. You will have a little bit more interesting photos by separating different plans to add a depth in your photos. This is just one of the ways how we can do it. There are a lot of different ways, uh, depends on the from photo to photo, but the principle are the same. Desaturate, make it less contrast, make it a little bit brighter, add a few elements here and there, and that's it. Also guys, if you want to be the part of Envato Elements and uh, use 50 plus millions photos and a lot of brushes, actions, uh, 3D models and uh, videos, stock videos and audio files, etc. You can just follow again, link down there in the description, apply for that and enjoy the content there. I personally love it and that's why I recommend it to you and that's why I accept Envato Elements to be the sponsor of this episode. Right guys, that's it for today. If you have any questions, leave it me down there in the comment section below. I will be glad to answer it. Subscribe in case you're not already, ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes and just share it, like it, do whatever you want and enjoy the rest of the day. Bye-bye.